And now, for your shot of courage. Hello, hello. My name is Angela Chavez, the Communications Director at Courage California, and you're listening to Courage. It looks good on you. Before I dive in, this standalone Shot of Courage episode is jam-packed with important information, which listeners will be able to find in the show notes. The California legislature is currently on summer recess, returning in August, but before lawmakers left, they adopted a $300 billion state budget that will provide refunds to most taxpayers in the state, boost public education funding, and expand abortion access. Courage California, alongside our partner organizations, advocated for some budget inclusions and are happy to share that the following made the cut. $2.3 billion to provide health care access to all income-eligible Californians through full-scope Medi-Cal, extending access to more undocumented Californians. $35.2 million to expand CalFresh to all, regardless of immigration status, and $1.4 billion for utility debt relief. Enough about what did happen. Let's move on to what didn't happen before summer recess. ACA 3, known as the In Slavery in California Act, did not pass. ACA 3 would have given voters the chance to remove the clause in our state constitution that currently allows for involuntary servitude as a means of punishment for a crime. Not surprising, however, was that Courage Hall of Shamer Senator Glazer was the only Democrat to vote no on ACA 3, and he also led a floor debate against the bill. So while Courage California hasn't started the Courage Score process yet for 2023, this is a friendly reminder to our state leaders that Californians are watching. And we'd love to see nothing more than more all-stars this year and less Hall of Shamers. The Supreme Court of the United States has ended its term with a long list of historic and controversial decisions. A few recent notable rulings, all of which were decided six to three, with the court's three liberal justices dissenting, includes New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. SCOTUS determined that the Second Amendment applies to concealed carry in public, striking down a New York State law requiring applicants for a license to carry a gun outside their homes to have a proper cause to do so. Prior to the court's ruling, New York's law had made it a crime to carry a concealed firearm without a license. West Virginia v. Environmental Protection Agency, also known as the EPA. SCOTUS decided that the EPA does not have the authority to regulate greenhouse gas emissions. The Supreme Court's decision undoing the EPA's authority to regulate climate emissions makes it critical that states step up to fight climate change. Shin v. Martinez Ramirez, SCOTUS decided that individuals incarcerated on the state level have no constitutional right to present new evidence to support claims on wrongful convictions. Vega v. Teco, SCOTUS ruled that a person cannot sue a law enforcement officer for violating their Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination if the officer did not provide a Miranda warning. So remember, if you're ever detained, do not speak to the police and always ask for a lawyer. Carson v. Mackin, SCOTUS held that the state of Maine is required to fund religious education at private religious schools as part of their state tuition assistance program. This explicitly requires taxpayers to support religious activity. Kennedy v. Bremerton School District. SCOTUS held that a high school football coach praying on the field with his team is protected by the First Amendment. And last but not least, Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization. Our last podcast episode was dedicated to the court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade and what it means for California. If abortion rights, privacy, and body autonomy are issues you care about, which I hope you do, please visit couragecalifornia.org and under campaigns, click on abortion rights to find useful resources. And if you're wondering what this decision means for the future of rights that are now at risk, visit CourageCaliforniaInstitute.org to check out our latest blog post, SCOTUS Will Not Stop at Overturning Abortion Rights. And lastly, Courage California supports SCA 10, a state constitutional amendment to explicitly provide for the fundamental constitutional right to abortion and contraception. SCA 10 passed both the Senate and Assembly, and Californians will be able to vote on this constitutional amendment in November. SCA 10 will be listed as Proposition 1 on your ballot, but we'll spend more time on ballot initiatives in a future episode. 
The Supreme Court's next term will start in October, and there are some impactful cases lined up that our nation's court has agreed to hear. A couple of cases in particular are on my radar because of the impact they will have on our elections and democracy. Moore v. Harper, in which the court will review state power in federal elections. This case seeks to reinstate gerrymandered congressional maps that were struck down because they favored an extreme partisan advantage for the Republican Party. State courts could lose their power to strike down anti-democratic state laws. Merrill v. Milligan, in which the court will reconsider the scope of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which prohibits voting practices or procedures that discriminate on the basis of race. This case will determine whether federal law requires states with large minority populations and racially polarized voting to take race into account in redistricting or whether they have free reign to squeeze minority voters into smaller strategic districts. Unfortunately, the trajectory of the court is unlikely to change when the court starts a new term in October. In California news, California's 2022 primaries are now behind us. Election results must be certified by July 15th, 2022. In the meantime, you can visit electionresults.sos.ca.gov to view results as they come in. Courage California's endorsements fared much better at the state and legislative levels than at the local level. While Courage was able to support DA Becton, who won her re-election in Contra Costa, we were unable to stop Prop H in San Francisco from passing, resulting in the unfortunate recall of DA Chesa Boudin. As we head into the general election season, what all Californians should be focused on is our state's voter turnout. Only 33% of registered voters voted in the primaries. That's one third of registered, not even eligible people turned in their vote by mail ballot. Alpine County had the most impressive turnout at 61%, while Lake County had the lowest turnout at 12%. I'll provide a link in the show notes so that you can find out how your county did. Considering where we are as a country, our voter turnout is putting us in a dangerous territory, especially in our blue and often taken for granted California. I know our country isn't working for a lot of us. And frankly, it was never intended to. Unless you're a white male, your right to vote was fought for and did not come easily. But it was worth the fight for those who came before us because of how important that right was and is. The fight continues with us because a lot of folks are still trying to place limits and create obstacles in an effort to obstruct our vote and silence our voices. As a brown-skinned female who this country was definitely not created for, I am asking and counting on you to not volunteer your silence, but instead register to vote and vote. If we want access to safe and legal abortions and contraceptives to be part of California's constitution, then we're going to need to turn out the vote in November. My name is Angela Chavez, and this has been your Summer Recess Shot of Courage. I thank you for joining me today, and I really hope I didn't mispronounce too many court cases. Please rate, subscribe, and join us next time for Courage. It looks good on you. And like always, drop a line and join the conversation. Tag us at CourageCA and use the hashtag Courage looks good on you. Awesome.